it's hot in here. All right, thank you all for coming, and let me thank Senator Ed Markey, who is on the Health Committee and Chair of the Health Subcommittee for being with us as well. Uh, there is a lot of discussion in our country as to how divided we are as a people, uh, and there's obviously a lot of truth in that. On many, many issues, there is a deep division in our country. But I've got to tell you that on one of the most important matters facing our country, the American people, whether they're Democrats, Republicans, independents, conservatives, progressives, whatever, they could not be more united. And that is the need to take on the extraordinary greed of the pharmaceutical industry and to substantially lower the outrageously high cost of prescription drugs in America. On that, the American people are united. As a nation, we spend almost twice as much as any other nation on health care, almost twice as much. We're now spending over $13,000 for every man, woman, and child. That is an astronomical and unsustainable amount of money. And one of the reasons that we spend so much is the high cost of prescription drugs. So when we talk about the high cost of prescription drugs, it is not just that one out of four Americans cannot afford the prescription drugs their doctors prescribe. And think about how crazy that is. Sick, go to the doctor, writes out a prescription, you can't afford it. That's crazy. But on top of that, you have hospitals spending a fortune on prescription drugs. Just spoke to a CEO of a hospital, 20% of his budget goes to prescription drugs. You are talking about insurance premiums going up because of the high cost of prescription drugs, not to mention the fact that taxpayers are spending a fortune on the cost of Medicare and Medicaid because of the high cost of prescription drugs. Meanwhile, not often talked about, but as pres prescription drugs in our country are unaffordable for millions of Americans, 10 of the top pharmaceutical companies in our country made over $110 billion in profits in 2022. $110 billion in profits while people cannot afford the medicine their doctors prescribe. And these companies almost always pay outrageously high compensation packages to their CEOs. As chairman of the Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions, one of my top priorities is to lower the outrageously high cost of prescription drugs in this country. And one of the ways that we do that is to hold the chief executives and CEOs of some of the largest pharmaceutical companies in our country accountable for what they are doing. Over two months ago, a majority of senators on the Health, Education, Labor, and Pension Committee invited Robert Davis, the CEO of Merck, Joaquin Duato, the CEO of Johnson & Johnson, and Chris Berner, the CEO of Bristol Myers Squibb, to a hearing, to a hearing, to discuss what they are doing to lower prescription drug prices in America. Now, why did we ask? Why do we ask these CEOs to come before us? The answer is pretty simple, and it is right behind me. Among other questions, we would like some simple answers as to why does the United States pay by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, sometimes 10 times higher for the same exact drug sold in Canada or in Europe, Mexico, as in the United States. Why is it that the median price of new prescription drugs in America is now over $220,000, including many new cancer drugs, $220,000? Why has the pharmaceutical industry spent over the past 25 years some $8.5 billion on lobbying and over $700 million on campaign contributions? Why are they spending tens of millions of dollars today on some 1,800 well-paid lobbyists all over Capitol Hill? 1,800. You got 100 senators, 435 members of the House, 1,800 lobbyists from the pharmaceutical industry, including former leaders of the Republican and Democratic parties. How does it happen that while millions of Americans cannot afford the prescription drugs they need, major drug companies in our country spend more on stock buybacks and dividends than they do on research and development? 
These are pretty simple and straightforward questions. These are the questions that are on the minds of many elderly people in our country, working people who go to the drugstore, can't afford the prescription drugs that uh, they desperately need. Now, as a result of our invitation, Chris Berner, the CEO of Bristol Myers Squibb, has agreed to voluntarily testify to, before the Health Committee, and we very much appreciate that. Unfortunately, up to this point, the CEOs of Johnson & Johnson and Merck have rejected our invitation. They apparently feel that they do not have to explain to the American people why prescription drug prices in this country are so outrageously high. As a result, that puts the Health Committee, the Health Education Labor Committee, in the position of having to subpoena these C CEOs in order to have them testify. That vote will take place this Wednesday, January 31st at 11 a.m. The CEO of Merck needs to explain to the American people why they charge diabetes patients in the United States $6,900 for Genuvia, when the exact same product can be purchased in Canada for $900 and just $200 in France. Pretty simple question, isn't it? How come you're charging those guys a fraction of what you're charging us? We want the CEO of Johnson & Johnson to explain to the American people why they charge Americans with arthritis, $79,000 for Stolara, when it can be purchased for just 16000 in the United Kingdom. We want the CEO of Bristol-Myers Squibb to tell us why they're charging patients here $7,100 for Eliquis, when the same product can be purchased for just $900 in Canada and $650 in France. I think it's an interesting question. You know, I think millions of Americans would love to know why we are charged 10 times more than other countries for the same exact product. And let me be very clear. These companies that we want to bring before us, they're not struggling companies desperately needing to raise prices to survive. 2022, Johnson & Johnson made nearly $18 billion in profits, paid its CEO over $27 million in compensation, spent over $17 billion in stock buybacks and dividends. That same year, Merck made $14 billion in profits, handed over $7 billion in dividends, paid their CEO $52 million. And Bristol-Myers Squibb made $6.3 billion in profits, while recently spending over $12 billion on stock buybacks, and provided their CEO with $41 million in compensation. Now, the reasons the companies have given us as to why they don't believe their CEO should testify rage from the laughable to the absurd. They really are pretty funny. They have told us that the CEOs of Johnson & Johnson and Merck just don't have the expertise necessary to tell us why they charge so much more for their medicine here than abroad. CEOs of the company don't have their expertise, really. Merck went so far, and this is really interesting, to tell our staff that their CEO is a tax attorney who is not an expert on prescription drug prices. And they said that, I think, with a straight face. Well, maybe, just maybe, the CEOs of these pharmaceutical companies should become experts on why they're ripping off the American people. And if they did, maybe they would give some thought about lowering the outrageous prices that they are charging us. The companies also claim that the Health Committee is somehow retaliating against Merck and Johnson & Johnson for filing lawsuits against the administration's plan to negotiate for low drug prices on Medicare. This is absurd. These companies have every right to file a lawsuit against the administration or anyone else. Let me just conclude by saying this. It is no great secret that many Americans are giving up on democracy. They're giving up on their government. They look at Washington and they're saying, hey, what are these people doing? Do they know that I can't afford prescription drugs? Do they know the pain that I'm experiencing? Or are they too busy getting campaign contributions and listening to lobbyists? That's the sad truth. Well, I've got to say this. So long as I am chairman of the Health Committee, we're going to be listening to the needs of ordinary Americans, and we are going to be prepared to hold large corporations, no matter how many campaign contributions they make, no how many lobbyists they have, we are going to hold them accountable. Ed Markey is the uh, chairman of the subcommittee on this health care. Ed, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman Sanders. Um, uh, thank you for um, your leadership on this issue. Because the, the potential of 
medical innovation is very real. It is the promise of a diagnosis. It is um, a treatment. It is a cure. Um, research is medicine's field of dreams from which we harvest the findings that give hope to families that there will be a cure for that disease that's been running through their family's history. And groundbreaking medical research and innovation gives patients that hope that their child's illness will be healed, that revives people from overdoses, that prevents a cancer <coughs> diagnosis from being fatal, and pulls us out of the darkest days of a deadly pandemic. Understanding the promise of medical innovation, Merck and Johnson & Johnson made promises to the American people. Founder George Merck once stated, quote, we try never to forget that medicine is for the people. It is not for the profit. Robert Wood Johnson wrote in Johnson & Johnson's credo that, quote, they must constantly strive to provide value, reduce their costs, and maintain reasonable prices. But there is not, nothing reasonable about what we are seeing before us today. These companies walked away from these grounding principles, and when given the choice of delivering for their shareholders or for the health of the American people, we have witnessed time and time again these companies put profit first. Simply put, these companies care more about their wealth than they care about America's health. Drug companies putting profits first fueled a national opioid epidemic, creating a tsunami of addiction and death. It turned up the dial on American drug prices despite the same drug selling for a fraction of the price in neighboring countries. Diabetes drugs cost $6,000 in the U.S., <coughs> yet only $900 in Canada. Cancer drugs, cancer drugs in the United States are four times the cost of the same exact drugs in the United Kingdom. It created so-called blockbuster drugs that rake in billions for these companies lining the bank accounts of shareholders while over 30% of Americans are not taking their medication as prescribed because of the cost. This is really a story of accessibility. It's an hallucination to believe that drugs which are on the counter but not affordable are accessible to ordinary Americans. That's what this debate, this discussion is all about. People with diabetes, asthma, cancer, dementia, they turn away from treatment because they can't afford it. They ration their medication and end up in bankruptcy due to the drug and other health care cost related issues. So we have seen medical innovation, and I support it, but innovation that costs so much that it puts hope out of reach instead of putting it into hands of families isn't really innovation at all. It is a cruel reminder that we are living in a sick care system in our country instead of a health care system, and companies want to keep it that way. But this is not inevitable, nor is it politically incurable. That's why this hearing is necessary. We have to demand that these CEOs explain to the American public why these prices are so high, why they are so inaccessible to ordinary Americans. We can create a health care system worthy of the American people. When pharmaceutical companies take a seat at the table and deliver innovative, groundbreaking medications at a price that the American people can actually afford, we can guarantee that the innovation that these companies promise can be realized by every American, no matter their income level. I thank Senator Sanders for calling for a hearing, which will be an opportunity for these companies to take a seat at the table, to work with Congress on how we can move forward together to deliver for 
the American people, to deliver for their uh, families' health and well-being, and to turn our system from a sick care system to a health care system for everyone. So I thank you, Senator Sanders. Thank you, Senator Markey. Uh, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, in the Senate, you're never totally confident of anything, but I, yes, I think we will have the votes. Yes, ma'am. Great question. And the answer is, I can. Uh, we brought, you may recall, we brought Moderna, the creator of the uh, 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 COVID vaccine before the hearing. And we said to them, you know, uh, you're now going to charge four times more for the vaccine, which was developed with a lot of taxpayer dollars, than you previously charged the government. And you've got millions of people who need the vaccine who can't afford it. What they said, and my understanding is they kept their word, is they would make the vaccine free to people in a non-bureaucratic way. So if you are uninsured or low income and you walk into a drugstore today, you can get the Moderna vaccine. Uh, furthermore, we had a hearing, as you may recall, on, dia on insulin, and the high cost of insulin. Diabetes, as you all know, is just a horrible uh, problem in America. Uh, and we had Eli Lilly coming before the, uh, on the panel, coming before the hearing, and saying that they would not uh, raise the cost of their insulin products. They promised the committee to do that. And to the best of my understanding, they have kept their word. So those are two important examples of where we have had some uh, progress. I think at the end of the day, uh, these guys get away with murder because they do it quietly. No one quite understands it. And when they're forced to go before the American people, they want to think twice. Uh, and, and I think they are prepared to make some changes. Uh, yes, sir. You, you are whom? Look, these are the guys who are responsible. At the end of the day, the CEOs make the decisions. And they have got to be held accountable, and they have got to tell the, their underlings uh, that the American people are sick and tired of getting ripped off and paying the highest prices in the world. And I think if there is, and I think we're seeing this in diabetes and in insulin, it's not an accident, not certainly not just what the committee did uh, to lower the cost of insulin. Uh, it's what the American people are doing. They're saying, hey, we, we're tired of this. And they're glad to see leadership in Congress supporting their needs. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, you know, we were giving thought to uh, subpoenaing Mr. Schultz of Starbucks as to why he was breaking the law in terms of denying workers their constitutional right to form a union. He ended up because we had the votes coming voluntarily, and we appreciated that, and that was an interesting hearing. Um, uh, look, this is an issue. It's an enormously important issue. It impacts, as Senator Markey said, all aspects of health care. A drug is, no matter how great the drug, ain't worth much if people can't afford it, right? And we all have constituents who tell us over and over again. So it's a normal, if you're interested in a, dealing with a dysfunctional health care system, this is an issue that has to be dealt with, ma'am. Well, these are very significant uh, companies. Uh, Medicare, for example, as Medicare went forward uh, to try to determine appropriately so which drugs they would negotiate prices for, these, it turns out, were some of the companies that they uh, selected. Because they are widely used drugs, they are very expensive drugs. So that's the obvious answer. Gentleman in the back. Look, is, and Ed, you jump in anything going on, on this. Look, it, it, this is no great secret. I won't shock anybody here. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry is an enormously powerful political force in America. Maybe next to Wall Street, they are the most powerful. They don't lose. 
The reason we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs is because they can charge us almost at any time, any price they want. That's the fact. They have 1,800 paid lobbyists. They spend a huge amount of money on campaign contributions. They are very powerful. One of the tools, you know, Ed and I and others working hard on legislation, one of the tools that we have is public pressure. Bring them before the American people. You know, they want to sell their products. And if the American people understand what's going on, uh, I think that puts pressure on them. That helps us lower the cost. And can I, can I just say, Jed. having CEOs testify who say they don't know enough about their companies <laughs> to testify will force them to bring everyone in the company in and then start to ask them, why is it ten times higher in Great Britain than it is in the United States? Go down the numbers for me. I'll have to answer. And the same thing will be true, you know, for every one of these drugs that these companies make. So to the extent to which the CEOs are saying that they're not qualified to testify as to why their prices are high and their profits are high, um, uh, says to us that we're actually doing them a favor. They can go in and ask everyone in their company, why are they so high? And is there a way we could lower the prices? Is there a way that we could model what we do in our country on what we're doing in other countries around the world? So to a certain extent, we're doing a favor for them because they'll learn a lot more about what their country's doing. They, they don't quite understand it. Senator Markey no, is no, like, we're I'm doing being, them a favor. I'm, I'm being facetious <laughs> and, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the goal. It's, I'm going for the jocular rather than the jugular in my answer, <laughs> but I think everyone understands the point I'm making. All right, maybe one more question. Uh, sir. Are they offering you any legitimate explanation for the point Well, as I mentioned, one of them, I mean, this is what they told my staff. Uh, the CEO of one of the companies is a tax attorney. What can I tell you? No, I mean, why prices are so high? Are the companies... Oh, the usual line is, no, the usual line is they're putting all their money into research and development. That's why they charge you ten times more than Canada. And yet they have all this money for stock buybacks, outrageous CEO compensation, 1,800 paid lobbyists right here. Look, bottom line is they are charging us the highest prices in the world because they can charge us the highest prices in the world. That's about it. No one is stopping them. There is no legislation. They have enormous power over the United States Congress. That's it. We're going to fight back. Thank you all.